Uh, welcome back guys. Uh, we got a 2008 Toyota Camry with a 3.5. Uh, customer's complaint is that sometimes we get a no start on the vehicle. So uh, this past weekend he called AAA, he has a AAA plan and uh, AAA came out and told him well battery's bad. So they put a battery in the truck, uh, in the truck, in the car and uh, the car started up and he went on his way. Uh, he went to the store today and um, when he went to leave the store, the car wouldn't start again. So he called AAA and um, the guy came down there and the car started. Uh, and he called us and came here, obviously. So he says, I don't think that it was the battery. I says, I don't think so either. Uh, so we'll see what's going on. So what we have now is I've been messing with the car since I drove him home. And as you can see, I go to start it. It... Uh, it does not want to start, okay? It does nothing. Now, one thing I noticed on this vehicle was this little tidbit here, which I hate when I see these. These things right here, I can't stand, okay? Uh, this is an aftermarket alarm. You can see the, you can see the uh, little button there, the little light. So, uh, whether or not this thing is working or not, uh, you know, is active, I don't know. I'm assuming it is. The door locks do work uh, off of it. So, my thing when I see these is that you have, to, you have to check these vehicles, okay? You have to make sure you don't have a voltage drop uh, where it goes through that alarm. Because I've fixed many of them over the years where that is the problem. People put starters, batteries, I've seen them change alternators, uh, all types of, you know, foolishness without checking the car. So checking the circuit is always paramount, okay? Um, I'm going to show you something. Just bear with me. Alright guys, I'm at my house. Um, I'm going to direct this part of the video, uh, or this whole video actually, more towards the do-it-yourselfer, as it turns out, because uh, I want to turn it more into, I guess, a little bit of a lesson on how to diagnose a starter circuit than an actual diagnosis video and all that stuff, because I didn't have the time when I was trying to film this today, everything went crazy, and uh, I don't know how some of these guys do it, man. Um, Anyway, I'm trying to put some material out there, and I figured if I could help more, you know, help, you know, some of the do-it-yourself guys out there with a little bit of lesson in basic uh, starting circuit electricity or whatever you want to call it, it's uh, it's better than nothing at all. So I'm gonna basically show you guys on the computer screen a wiring diagram in this next uh, little part here, and we're gonna go through the diagram and how to approach the diagnosis uh, without any kind of real intrusive testing and uh, show how we come to a conclusion without spending a lot of time you know, on the diagnosis itself, okay? So enjoy, and um, I don't know, thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever, guys. Uh, I'm trying my best. So check it out, and let me know what you think. All right, guys. So we're at the computer. I printed out a uh, diagram here, but uh, I just want to make this... Uh, simple for everybody to see and I hope that it's not going to roll too much on the screen I don't know I try my best here with these but it's hit or miss but either way we're going to go with it um, on this Camry we got a starting system diagram uh, this is without smart key system okay and it's not a hybrid so this is the diagram we're going to be following so now what I want to do is I want to focus in on the starting circuit obviously that's where we're at and um, I just want to talk about how we're gonna how we approach this, right? I already checked this car, so uh, the diagnosis is really over with. But I want to show you how to break down the diagram for those of you out there that are trying to diagnose a car that's a no start and potentially a starter problem or, or a starter circuit problem. They are all basically going to work the same, all right? Uh, obviously, the diagram is going to help you and you know know what's in that circuit. But what I want to do is I want to break this down and show you how we would approach this, okay, to make it easy. When you look at this whole diagram, this is the starting circuit. When you look at this whole thing, if you notice I got some parts here that are, out, that are highlighted in yellow, okay, this is all part of the same system, the same circuit that we're working on. Now there's a lot here to look at, especially if you are a novice at this and if you've never uh, if you've never you know done electrical work or looked at wiring diagrams you know learned how to read them correctly 
there's a lot here to look at. Okay, there's a lot. To see. It seems very busy. There's a lot going on. So, if actually, if I, if I just uh, bring this, make this smaller, you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Okay, this is the. There's a lot to this diagram, right? For a starter. Let's zoom back in. Uh, what I want to show you is how to break this down and logically approach the problem. Okay, this is a simple. This is, in essence, a very simple circuit. Now, if you notice, I want to show you down, uh, down at the corner, down at the bottom here. You see this here? It says uh, clutch start switch, right? It's MT. It's manual transmission. This vehicle is not a manual trans, so we don't have to worry about that right off the bat. Okay, eliminate the stuff that from the diagram if you're nervous or, you know, uh, you know, if you're just not used to looking at these things, uh, they could be intimidating, I guess, to people, right? I, I was intimidated when I first started in this business and I was learning how to read these things. I didn't know what I was doing. So it takes time and it also takes some training, I mean, to become familiar with this stuff. So let's look at the part of the vehicle that's not working. That's the starter. Okay, we're turning the ignition switch to the crank position, and we're getting absolutely nothing. We don't hear a click. We don't hear a peep. Nothing out of this thing. It doesn't. It doesn't do anything. So, we're gonna go on this vehicle. The starter is actually pretty accessible, pretty simple to get to. And I like to try to keep things as simple as possible. All right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and I'm gonna focus right here on this starter. I'm not gonna pay attention to anything else right now in this diagram. I don't care. How does the starter work? That's what we need to know, right? What do we need for a starter to work? Well, starter needs power. Okay, it needs a battery feed to it. The starter needs a ground. Okay, and the last thing that the starter needs is an input to the solenoid, which is also a power feed in the crank mode, which is this wire here. So you need those three things for this thing to actually engage and start and turn this engine. Okay, so let's start with basics. We'll go to this lead here, which is the which is the black. This is the heavier gauge cable that you're going to see on the starter. You're going to see a heavy and a smaller gauge. One is going to be you know a battery cable. The other one is maybe going to be a 12 gauge or a 10 gauge or wh whatever they use on this. You know even 14 gauge, whatever they're using on this on this specific vehicle. It's going to be much smaller. Um, this is going to be bolted in with a lug. Okay, you're always going to see these bolted on with a lug. Uh, you know a nut that's going to you know on a stud. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, the other side is going to be either the same, much smaller obviously, or it's going to have a slip on like a clip, a quick connect or whatever. So th I think actually that's what this one has, it has a quick connect. But you're going to go to the battery lead or I'm going to go to the battery lead first with my test light. I'm going to check and see that I have constant power. If you see this, it's directly from the battery. There's no fuse, there's nothing. Now I want to see battery power there all the time, whether my key is on, off, if I crank this, I also want to make sure that I still have power there and that the light is not dimming, all right? I don't want to, I, what I'm checking here basically is to make sure I don't have a voltage drop problem between the starter and the battery itself, okay? You want to check this under a load, meaning in crank mode when it's not working because you may not see it at rest. It may show 12 volts there and then when you go to crank it, if you have a, a wire that's uh, corroded here somewhere, say, uh, and you don't see it, you go to crank this thing, you're going to have a voltage drop, which means that you're not going to have enough power to get the starter to turn. Now, the fact that this car has an alarm in it, okay, so that's something that's wired in aftermarket. That's also something we're going to consider with this thing, because if you have an alarm uh, where it has a, a, a starter, you know, starter uh, enable on that alarm, that means the starter circuit has been cut and it's going through the alarm module now. So now, if you have a bad, if you have an alarm problem, it can and will cause the starter not to turn, not to crank. You will not be losing this line here, though. Okay, not for that. The line you would lose would be this one, would be the gray that turns into black. That's your S wire, or start wire. This is only going to be powered in crank mode so you're not going to see anything on this line until you try to, until you try to crank this engine over um, when I move on to that you put a test light in that line same thing and you're gonna crank it you're gonna have your partner crank it if you can't you know do both at the same time obviously you have somebody crank it and make sure that you have power here
all right on this vehicle we did all right and I'm gonna use this as the example so now knowing that we have power here all the time we have power here in crank mode we do not have a voltage drop issue on those wi on those wires or in that circuit we're gonna go on and we're gonna check the last thing which is the ground now a lot of people that I you know that I know personally overlook this all the time you know what I mean they don't they don't realize how important grounds are you guys do because you guys pay attention but a lot of guys don't grounds are just as important a part of the circuit as the positive side alright you have to have both for an electric motor to work there's no there's no getting around that you need power and ground so on this if you look this circuit you see this ground symbol here and there's nothing there's no wiring like on here right this is grounded through the case so it's bolted and it's grounded directly through the housing the case of the starter I'm gonna tell you I've seen a number of times over the years where the starter mounts it gets corroded and it gets rusted or whatever it gets all oxidized and it loses the ground between the you know to the starter case this thing will not work I'm gonna tell you right now absolutely will not work and I've seen it a lot of times and I don't overlook that when I test these things now what I do is simply is I take my test light normally you would take your test light put your lead on the test light to negative of the battery and then check for power wherever you're checking right what we're gonna do is just take the test light put it on positive and we're gonna go to the case of the starter with the tip and again I'm gonna have my partner crank this engine and we're gonna check and make sure that that light stays lit it's gonna stay lit all the time but you want it to stay lit all the time you wanna make sure you have a good ground if that light goes out you're you got a problem alright you have to have you have to have a ground here all the time under a load is the way to test it so once you've eliminated all of this okay say which we did this this has a good ground constant power on the black wire which is the battery feed and I have power in crank mode on this wire here once I've eliminated those three things what are my other possibilities what's broke on this car starter that's it there's nothing else that's broke on this vehicle there's nothing else it can be now what I just did is I eliminated everything else everything on this whole diagram is absolutely 100 percent eliminated there's no other possibilities left deduction right um, so let's see if we were to look at if we didn't approach it this way and we looked at this diagram where do you want to start you want to go to the starter relay which we eliminated already right there's a starter relay that's always a point of failure possibility I've seen I've seen people put starters in vehicles and then tow them to us and it turned out that it had a bad starter relay not a, not not uncommon they fail like any other one so uh, that's always a good place to start right I don't like starting there and I'm gonna tell you why if I touch this relay and this relays contacts are just you know starting to go bad and I touch it and I rattle it around uh, pulling it out or whatever I'm doing or even just the pressure of my fingers on the casing of the relay make this thing work what did I prove I didn't prove anything because now the car started and I have nothing to check and if it doesn't do it again while it's in my possession I've, I I'm, I'm done I have nothing I can't anything I do from that point on is absolutely a guess so what should I do throw a relay in it okay maybe I should I don't know should I put a starter in it maybe I don't know I don't know what happened I'm not sure even if I'm pretty sure I still I still have a, a reasonable doubt because I don't know hundred percent I couldn't test the circuit without tampering with it so again it's not intrusive or as as less intrusive as possible amount of testing right you don't want to touch things um, you know it has an alarm do I want to start going under the dashboard and pulling the panels off and get into the uh, the S circuit here the start circuit to see if uh, something's wrong there same situation what if I touch something and it starts I proved absolutely nothing so my my point here is is having your direction but use common sense when doing this type of stuff anything you touch with an electrical issue can be a potential fail because you've you've eliminated you you've actually fixed it at least temporarily and you don't know what you touched I see guys all the time the car doesn't start they go start grabbing wiring harnesses and pulling on things and banging on things well if it starts what the hell did you prove nothing um, what I showed you okay has eliminated all of the other possibilities hundred percent 
and we could do it in three minutes or less, you know, depending on access to the starter, right? But we've eliminated everything else. We've eliminated the ignition switch circuit itself that could be faulty. We've eliminated blown fuses because if there was a blown fuse, I would have I would have seen it with a loss of power to one of my circuits, right? Um, I've eliminated the oh I've eliminated this as well. I've eliminated my park neutral switch over here, right? Because if this didn't work, then my starter relay would not work either, okay? Because this does engage the starter relay. Um, the, the this is all potential. This this wiring up here on the other the other um, gray wire, that's what's going to your uh, park neutral switch. All right, it's going to send power through that switch on this on this highlighted line, and it's going to send that 12 volts to the co this side of the coil on the relay. That's the control side. The other side of the coil is going to be constantly grounded. Right? These are all potential failures, by the way, guys. Any of this that if this ground fails on this starter relay right here, say this gets corroded, and you go to start this thing, you're going to have the same exact symptom that I have with this vehicle with that with with a different problem entirely. Okay? If this fails, say we lose this ground right here, this car is going to do the same exact thing. It's going to be a no crank, no start, and that's going to be that. The difference, right? The difference is going to be what? When I go to test this at my starter the way I did, this wire, the S wire here, that's supposed to get power when you crank it, is going to have nothing on it. So then we're going to backtrack, right? And we're going to go, we're going to say, why don't we have power here? And we're going to go to our relay at that point, and we're going to see why we don't have our relay functioning properly, okay? Did we lose whatever? And we're going to determine at that point that we lost the ground once we, you know, diagnose it, obviously. But... Do you see my method? I've eliminated any other... This is not in the circuit, so that's absolutely eliminated. But I've eliminated any other potential failure in this circuit 100% from the top to the bottom just testing my circuit here at the, at, the, at the starter itself, okay? I don't have to go anywhere else. I know now I have a bad starter. So um, tomorrow we'll be putting that in and getting this gentleman back on the road and he won't have to worry anymore.